Welcome to another episode of The Read Pile. Today I'm looking at Avatar The Last Airbender Volumes 3 and 4. I've already done videos for 1, 2, and 5. So this finishes off the collection that I got. Um, there are additional comics both from the Aang and Korra eras, but uh, different creative teams. So this finishes off the Yang and Guruhiru era. And I think for now, I'm also done. I will reevaluate down the line whether or not I, I want to pick up additional stories. But um, doing some Googling, there are some interesting things that I'm curious about. It's just at this time, I'm trying to get uh, through the stuff that I already own. So this finishes off that. And there's... Before I get into this, there's something that I want to bring up that I didn't mention back in Volume 1, which is they established that there are... Let's see if I can find them. These characters have become Air Acolytes, but they started out as an Avatar Aang fan club. There were two chapters in the Earth Kingdom. I think they merged together and... Um, that was established in Volume 1. In Volume 2, after Aang kind of flipped out initially, he's like, my life is not a costume. Um, they were doing some unknowingly disrespectful things, and um, in Volume 2, they changed into Air Acolytes. They want to respect, they want to learn of the Air Nomad ways, and they have a pretty lengthy supporting role in this volume. Ultimately, what's happening is Aang, he brings Toph along. She's kind of annoying in this, which is upsetting because Toph is well, just a phenomenal character, but she's one of my favorites as well. Aang and the Air Acolytes are traveling to a sacred place to the Air Nomads to perform a ceremony, and they run into a settlement. Really, it's a town. Seen there. There's a factory. Mm, looks like it's polluting because it is. So Aang flips out. He is dismayed. And this is one of the problems that I've had sort of with the series, with these five volumes. I've praised it for its complexity, its non straightforward, its layers, its subplots. I've praised a lot. What I haven't talked about is or I haven't talked about much. It happens here, it happened back in volume one, a little bit, volume five. Maybe there's just a bit of a formula in three of the volumes. But um, what happens is there are at least two sides and the characters on each side get entrenched in their viewpoint until things almost explode or they do explode and there's just not listening to compromise they're not listening to the other side they're not listening to the fact that there might be another way maybe a third option and that's i did make a comment when i was talking about volume one that i thought the solution seemed obvious although it took everyone else a while to get there and maybe that's just the way i think i know that they're are in real life plenty of people that get entrenched in their viewpoints and won't listen to the other side. Also, much like Harry Potter, these characters are teenagers and I find frequently teenagers to be annoying. So sometimes Avatar, Team Avatar are annoying. Harry Potter I definitely found annoying. But I just have to remind myself like they're not they're not fully formed adults. There are some past lives that uh, Aang talks to to get advice, and that is helpful. But uh, ultimately, it's spirits in in this volume. So there's the factory, there's town, a settlement on a sacred site where Aang wants to perform a ceremony. That site has ties to some spirits. There are two primary spirits. This is one of them. You can see a little bit of the other guy here. And conflict, of course, happens. There's also some Earth versus Fire conflict. There's some Team Avatar versus 
everyone conflict. It's 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 good. It's really good. This is uh, Toss father, by the way. He makes an appearance, and there's pretty emotional scenes with them. It's um, it's good. Like I said, it's also a little bit annoying. There is maybe a formula that's making itself present when reading all three of these or all five of them so close together but it is still good i still recommend it and the art's still great still a bunch of notes on the side about behind the scenes stuff this is one of the other main spirits so yes it's good this is maybe one of my actually i am gonna say that volume three is my least favorite of the five which Sucks because it's so top focused. She does get some great scenes, but also she is annoying. She's straight up disrespectful to Aang. Aang is perhaps disrespectful right back, but it's not the best. Volume 4. Zuko returns home to the Fire Nation. He brings his mother with him. He, uh, Uncle Iroh shows up. I love Uncle Iroh. He is, I think, my favorite of all of the cast. So I love Iroh, Mai shows up as well. There is a note on one of these pages about a character that first appeared in a free comic book day short. I was able to find that pretty quickly, almost immediately with some minor Googling. Um, I, I did read it, but I will also say that it's, it's unnecessary to seek out. It probably should have been reprinted here, but it wasn't. Still, there is a one-page recap that tells you everything that you need to know, so I didn't actually need to read it, but I don't find that out until much later. There's a reference to a character, and then much later you're like, oh, uh, this recapped everything I needed. So in this one, there is... I think I talked a bit about this. Not everyone in the Fire Nation is happy with Zuko. They feel he's weak, and this is one of the main guys behind that push to reinstate uh, Fire Lord Ozai. So there's a whole plot going on to undermine Zuko, and these supposed spirits show up. These are great. I will get more, I'll talk more about them in a minute, I hope. But, um, Kimura Rikage. Amazing characters. So the whole thing revolves around undermining Zuko in order to reinstate Ozai. There is um, a gathering of forces. There's sort of a smear campaign. There's a public face and a secret society. And all of it is phenomenal. Oh, Kyoshi Warriors show up. They're phenomenal. Such an amazing cast. I'm mean, going to talk about a lot of people being my favorite, but I mean, there are just amazing characters in this series. All right, so with all of that going on, Zuko is trying to find his way, trying to do, trying to lead a nation, but also he needs to lead. And in order to do that, he needs to gain the support of the people that used to be under Ozai. I don't think I've talked about this, but it's one of my complaints as far as, like, if you think about Star Wars, right? Return of the Jedi, both Vader and the Emperor wind up dead at the end of that, and supposedly, I mean, you're supposed to infer from that, I guess, that the Empire is going to fall, and then novels take over, and then there's more movies eventually, and all this stuff, but, like, two people versus an empire like there's a lot of there's a ton thousands millions maybe who knows there's a bunch of people underneath those two that would want to keep the structure in place even if they can't maintain it long term but there's plenty of people that would want to keep the structure in place Zuko is coming in and he's fighting against those people in support of Ozai so this is the complexity, it's the subtlety that I was talking about that um, a lot of other stories skip over. Taking out Ozai alone does not immediately fix everything with the Fire Nation. Zuko has a lot of work ahead of him. This is 
I'm not even going to say the beginning of that because it started back in volume one, but it's a continuation of that, especially now that he's back home prominently. Volume one, he was home for a little bit, and then he takes his army to the Earth Nation, and it's a whole thing. You should read volume one, is what I'm saying. But, um... Yes, this this goes into all of the messiness, sort of the aftermath of of taking out a powerful leader and dealing with the supporters that want to maintain the status quo. It's fantastic. It's phenomenal. I love it. There's a great subplot. It's it's. It really starts near the end, but Azula makes an appearance in this as well, and really she sets herself up basically to be the Joker to Zuko's Batman, if that makes sense. She wants to push him into being a better leader, and she feels that she's going to be a villain in order to do that, and it's kind of amazing, and it happens near the end. It's throughout, but really she makes this claim she takes a stand near the end of the volume and I really enjoy that sort of world building where you're hinting at long term storylines or hinting it you're hinting at even if you don't show it that the characters that the story continues on even after the the writers move on to other projects. This uh volume four is phenomenal. I loved it. Again, you get a bit of hardline entrenchment, but it makes sense, whereas the other ones, volume one and three, it made less sense. This, it's the same sort of entrenchment I was talking about, but it makes sense in this case. So what I'm trying to say is I enjoyed all five of these. I have no idea what I'm reading next, but I do recommend this they were fantastic and i am super glad to have these giant books now in the red pile